everything is about race. Black communities, gay communities, immigrant communities feel a lot of media representations to be inadequate, biased. There's a lot of reporting around police violence and black men. And I realized a lot of the arguments that we were having were about depictions. I started to wonder how different would it be if I swapped images or if I changed some of the text. And so that was the first time I physically started playing around with the works. This isn't a grammar exercise. I'm really trying to see if I can disrupt subliminal messaging about who should be valued. I need a kind of one of the most respected institutions that kind of prides itself on getting this right to kind of say, actually, nope, you're not getting it right, right? The Counter Narrative series, the primary way you see it is in public, in the streets. We went to four locations between Bedside and Crown Heights area and hung them up. You imagine who might be moving in at like the height of gentrification in many of these neighborhoods. And you're putting this print up of this like dead black kid. The title is Two Lives at the Crossroads. Equating these two lives as if they're neighbors. The Times layout to me perpetuated that. The subtlety there is that this is an equal, these people are on equal footing, they have equal responsibility in this event that took place, and I, that, I, that's not true, I don't believe that. You have a cop and you have a kid, and there's a responsibility here, and it lies with one person more than the other. I know he was 18, I feel like if he wasn't black, we would be calling him a kid. So there's a lot of what, in journalism is key information. He'd sometimes use drugs and he'd rapped, and I just don't think that that's necessary information. So I blacked it out. Like, oh, that's what you do when you're, that's what you do when you're 18. You do drugs, and you drink, and you rap, and you curse. Cause like, really, did you just write in here that you curse? But it just goes to show how important images are. It changed the way I viewed the text. Now you know he's a kid, right? During the Olympics and the Ryan Lochte scandal, you have this headline about these swimmers, and then there's this big photo of Usain Bolt. And I remember just being like, what the hell? There's no way if the track team had done that, they wouldn't have been on the front page. People felt like I caught the times making a mistake. And maybe willfully using the image of a black man under crime. I found a very good image of Ryan Lochte that was just him alone in the pool. I redacted most of the article, but I also inserted white Americans into the title to categorize it in a way that other races were categorized. I guess it's something restorative about it, the kind of restorative justice. You know, <laughs> online the hashtag was like, white crime, white photo. <laughs> Um, and that was really funny because people were like, yeah, that's actually a really good hashtag. When you are done with the song, move back. Do not replace when you are hey, go, 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 go. Hey. I'd never, I'm 35, I've never seen a torch rally. Like, this is some shit I feel like I would read about in a book. It was a riot by white nationalists, and I was like, they're going to get it wrong. And they got it so wrong. It was a side piece. It had two columns out of the five on the front page that day. If you have a white torch rally, this is a major event. This isn't a sidebar item. For the most part, I keep the layouts how they are. But the problem here was the layout, right? That's the journalistic hiccup here, is that this layout doesn't speak to the severity of these issues.
what you give space to and what you allow people to see um, says a lot. The Tulsa hate crime is a really interesting one because I didn't really make an image swap. Vernon Majors is this white guy. He lives next to this Lebanese family and he had harassed them for years. And eventually, and unfortunately, he kills the son, Khalid Jabara. It runs with this wonky headline that says he's a Tulsa man and accused of harassing this Lebanese family charged with murder. Huh, that's interesting. The Lebanese family had been there for 30 something odd years, I say since 83. And this guy had been there like seven years. So I'm trying to figure out why he would get that title. If anybody was to get it, it's Jabara who should get that title. And I removed Lebanese. And I also inserted white American. I was really interested in the way the news can slightly other people. And I used to wear racism as well. Because he called the family dirty Arabs, but then it just says harassing. And I'm like, I don't understand why we can't just say racism. Like they just didn't want to use the word racism. The news cycle moves so quickly that we're all kind of skimming through things and we're just kind of accepting narratives. It's not always this bombastic and in your face. There are these subtle ways that racism works in the oldest of institutions. If it's not this egregious thing coming at you, I think it's so easy to ingest. You might not print Mexicans or rapists. What other ways do you contribute to the thinking about minorities? You have to be able to look in the mirror and go, we're failing in these ways. And if you don't see yourself as maybe just as much of a problem in some ways as Trump, then what work are you doing? What's important about counter narratives is that it's not meant to be like an indictment of news media. I could almost say that it's just as much as an indictment of the reader. Now, I don't know what impact that will have with the papers, but I definitely know people are saying to me, when I'm reading now, I'm saying to myself, why is this photo here? There's something about seeing a different image, about shifting the size of a photo. It gets at a feeling that people have, but they don't know how to explain it. Where I'm situated as a person in the margins, I think I can see where are there are gaps in ways that other people may not. I'm a black gay woman. That goes very much into kind of how I see the news, how I interpret what happens. What I believe might be an angle that's overlooked doesn't necessarily mean I'm more right. It just means I have a different vantage point. <laughs>